Hey everyone, it's Dave and my trusty sidekick, Bo, who is not so trusty because she's walking away. But I'm gonna walk you through the garden today. It is a beautiful, sunny, 70 degree day in Southern California. We have some of the Scylla blooming here. I'll show you some others in just a moment. A dwarf Shama Cypress. We did have more rain this week. What a surprise. We have some beautiful buds coming up on the Cecile Bruner Rose. So that'll be in bloom in the next couple weeks. I did see some aphids though. In fact, I don't know if I can zoom in super close, but there's some aphids on some of the buds. I usually don't do anything for control of those insects. Um, generally, if you just hose them off with water, that gets rid of most of the issues. And everything here is, you know, really spaced well enough to where it's not an issue with aphids. Bay trees looking beautiful. And look at how well the apricot has leafed out in just the past week. Foxglover looking really good. And then over here in this bed, look at the cat mint. It's really growing out nicely, finally. Got quite a few more buds coming up on the irises here. Lynn Anderson just about to open up and Queen Elizabeth. It's always beautiful to see the first roses of the season. The rose down here is called 49er. And then we saw this one as well last week. This is Duet. And look at all of those blooms on that Scylla. That can be probably so the sun's not glaring on them. There we go. Look at all those blooms. And this is such an easy bulb to grow and it comes back year after year after year. We've got the dwarf mugo pine and the leonotus behind it. I've been so happy with how the leonotus has leafed out and made the transplanting. It's been transplanted like four times in this yard. We've also got the almond bush here, which I picked up last fall, and super fragrant flowers, very kind of heliotrope uh, smell, that old fashioned kind of almost like a violet type of deal. Uh, the sweet pea bush with Bo walking by it has done incredible as far as blooms go. And also another plant that's done incredible is that scaviola. And the scaviola is, you know, just something I put in just for a little bit of color, something else to kind of fill in this area. It's just incredible amount of blooms. I put in these three lavenders. These are a dwarf lavender, so only about eight or nine inches in height. Also another dwarf conifer in the back. Still waiting for the mock orange to leaf out. But what I did see last week, as I move around here, there's some blooms on the crab apple. And again, probably not focusing too well because of the glare, but I was excited to see that because you can kind of see all the stems are finally leafing out. I was really worried, but 
It was all for naught because it's doing great. Look at the larkspur growing up. And again, you saw these planted just a few weeks ago. This is gold metal, by the way. And the dianthus. Another dwarf chamaecyparis. Planted the fuchsia back here. This is voodoo. And we've got some pink clover ground cover behind. Got some bacopa around the tree there. The new rose, Princess Caroline de Monaco. We've got some more delphiniums in the back there. It's where I put the Dunes Valley thyme, carnation, and also behind the rock I put, now that's in the shade, but there's some stone crop sedum back there. Here's the row of Scylla. And again, all of these probably started from a dozen bulbs, maybe 20. And if you remember, I had had some plants here that had kept this bulb from coming up. I don't know if there's any blooms on it right now, but it normally has kind of like a pitcher shaped bloom on it. So if I see one, I'll make sure to record it, but it kind of looks like that uh, arrowhead plant, house plant. This entranthus looking fantastic. This is going to be where I put the vegetable garden, at least for this year. We've got some leaves coming out of the dogwood. All this needs to be clean, but again, it hasn't been dry enough to clean. It's just been rainy and miserable. Look at those falls of blooms from the pink jasmine. So if you remember, I just bought this a couple weeks ago. That leafed out super quick. And even here, there's still a couple blooms on the quince. Some plants that I desperately need to get into the ground. I've been really pleased with the pomegranate. And also look at the Osteo that is leafing out. This columbine has some buds on it. Those will be open shortly. Variegated Ostromeria. Red vein chard. Can't wait for buds to start coming up on the daylily. And even though I have to get all the weeds away from it still, this daylily is really gonna be exciting because it is a double bloom. Now I did, of course, start on a new project and that is, if I can get my shadow out of the way, this area here. Uh, which I dug down about five inches or so and leveled it off. 
I'm gonna put some aggregate at the bottom, then layer of sand, put some bricks in. So this will be a bricked area for the hose on the hose bib. And if I eventually wanna do a path or a gate to the side of the house, I'll put that there as well. So I had to move the rocks away from the edge And I'll hopefully show you a completed work of this next week. No more blooms on the magnolia, but still it's looking really beautiful. And still a whole lot of blooms on the pink breath of heaven. All right, that makes it all the way around the yard. I've had a couple requests from people to show them how I create the brick border. So what I'm gonna do, as you can see, I just started on this flower bed here, uh, is to put in some of the bricks. So this is the before image. Got some weeds to pull and some mulching to do as well. You can kind of see how low the dirt falls in this section of the bed. So I'm gonna pull the weeds out, add some mulch, and I'll be back in just a moment. All right, I've got the area I wanted to put in the bricks for edging weeded. Got some compost mixed in. I've got all the tools I need. So I'm just gonna put in 10 bricks I'm going to use the wide end of the mattock here and also the smaller mattock for more fine tuning. All right, so I have dug my trench. And I used the mattock and now I'm going to put in some of the bricks. Uh, keep in mind that I'm kind of looking for this particular angle. When you get to a curve, the angle may be a little bit more steep. And there's Bo, because she has to be in all of the videos. And if I was in a less clay soil, I would put sand down here first but because my soil is so clay-like, I am not concerned about the bricks moving very much. And if I did want to bury them a little bit deeper, uh, I could exert some pressure up here with a block and a mallet, tapping them, tamping them even further into the ground. So I'm basically laying in the bricks like this, but I also want to make sure that this level and this level are the same. So I'm going to mix in just a little bit of dirt here so that I have some soft fill. And that looks really good. And then I'm going to put some dirt on the one side, some dirt on the other. I'm going to tamp this down as well. And once I do uh, several of them, I will take a step back and look and make sure it's the curve that I want because these can always be moved and uh, rearranged. So in terms of depth, I want at least a third uh, of the brick and probably that's about 30 to 40% of the brick submerged. And then that'll hold it into place. And here we are at the end of the day. The bricks came out really, really nicely. Planted some more poppies and mulched everything with a cedar mulch. Everything has been watered in. And now I will continue this on later in the week and get that next portion done.